forget everything you've learned about flux core welding and if you stick with me to the end, I'll show you a trick on how to get your welds looking like this every time. If you haven't picked up a welder yet, start with flux core. You don't have to deal with gas or rods and that kind of stuff. It's one of the easiest processes to learn and it's one of the cheapest to get into. I mean, I'm gonna be using my $200 titanium welder, used it on tons of projects, and if you like it, well, then you can learn other processes after that. Skip the fixed shades and go with an auto darkening helmet. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Gloves and a fire resistant or leather jacket. Now, you might be wondering, what does this have to do with throwing out a good weld? Let me throw a nice hot flaming spatter ball on your bare arm and see if you don't flinch while welding. And thus there goes your perfect consistent weld bead. Most welders don't come with wire anymore and you might be tempted to because it is cheaper to buy some MIG wire. It's got the copper coating to it. Don't, it won't work. You need, you know, the gasless MIG, inner shield, flux core wire. Uh, goes by many names, but that's what you need for flux core welding. I've done a specific video for it because it's worth it. Anti-spatter spray and nozzle gel. Clamps, magnets, and bricks. Well, it's critical that you hold your piece in place while you're welding or at least until it's tacked up. I started out in my garage on the floor and I would use bricks to hold the pieces in place, you know. Then I picked up a couple cheap magnet packs and those were great, still have them and use them. And I've stepped up and made my own welding table and as you can see I got holes in here so then I can put clamps in and clamp it actually to the table itself. And one of the tools that I actually use more than the welder itself is an angle grinder. Yes, they're cheap enough you can actually go pick out a bunch so then you have one for each tool attachment. Make sure you got some cutoff discs, um, a flapper disc, grinder disc or wheel, and a wire brush. Flux core is not a picky process in that your metal doesn't have to be, you know, perfectly cleaned before you start welding. Uh, it can have a little rust and a little paint, but you will want a good ground connection, you know, meaning that you can see the bare metal, no rust or anything because a good ground connection will get you that path of electricity, which does produce a better weld. If you ended up picking up a MIG welder, it will have bells and whistles that flux core only machines don't. One, for example, is you can always change the polarity, meaning what is positive and negative for your torch. If you're flux core welding, this will need to go to the negative terminal. Oop. And your ground clamp should go to the positive. MIG would be opposite. Looking under the hood, you are gonna have rollers. Now, these are just little wheels that actually send the wire through the sheathing. Only thing you gotta pay attention to is some of them have knurled type teeth on it, others are just a straight V groove. Knurled goes with flux core, V groove with MIG welding and they all have wire size diameters stamped on it. It's usually a number, 0.03 or 0.035. Whatever it may be, you just need to match that with the wire diameter that you picked up. And on the other end, all contact tips, which is this little uh, brass copper looking piece, that will have a stamped uh, number on it as well. Match all those three and you are set. With the hood still up, pull the trigger a couple times, make sure that your tension's good, that the wire's just running smoothly. Settings, they play a huge part in how the weld turns out. And the best thing to do is start with your machine itself. All of them will have suggested settings, and if not, I'm sorry right now, you're gonna have to take a little extra time to play around with the machine to figure out what those settings are. Now that I've actually done in a completely other video. So if your machine does not, you know, check out my other videos, I'll link it below to um, settings for your machines. But for right now, the settings that it will tell you, there's two of them. One would be the wire speed and one is the voltage. And you'll see that they play hand in hand. As you get it thicker in material, your settings are gonna both gradually be going up. And likewise, when you go thinner material, they'll go down. A majority of the machines actually put a thickness gauge in there so you can put your material up there and see how thick it is. Now, as you can imagine, not everybody's just doing little four inch coupons and can easily slide that in there. So I've found a thickness gauge extremely helpful to have on hand to figure out what material thickness you have so then you can really know which settings to go with. 
Keep in mind, all machines are different. So I always have a piece of practice material that is the same thickness as the end result project will be. That allows me to actually figure out, you know, and make sure the settings are correct before I go down and lay down the final bead on the project that you're most likely gonna be showing off. If not, then have at it and who cares what the weld looks like. Did your world turn out like this? If so, fantastic, and just subscribe to my channel and click on the next video. If not, let's go over that tip, and that would be forget everything you've learned about flux core welding. Yes, it's important to know about stick out and angle and the 10 other things you're supposed to be thinking about while welding. But if you're just starting out, that is overwhelming. And so here is what you're gonna do. Wherever your angle bead is, you're gonna find something parallel to that. For example, the edge of this table, it is going to be parallel with this weld. And then with your arm, you know, propped up against it and holding it, you are going to ride your elbow, your arm, your hand, whatever it may be along this plane. By sitting there as with your other hands fixed, you could only go in that one direction. So with your piece set, your arms fixed, and you only moving in that one direction, you only have to think about one thing, and that is speed. Do a couple dry runs, actually feel what is more comfortable, and more importantly, do one actually going the speed that you should be going. Now, this is where I just can't tell you, oh, you're gonna be traveling, you know, X amount of speed, because it depends on the thickness of material, your settings, the machine, a lot goes into it. And so this is where, you know, putting down a bunch of beads, you gotta look at it afterwards to see if you should be going quicker or slower. This is the real time speed of that eighth inch coupon, just to give you an idea of how fast I am going or how slow I'm going. And this is where a bunch of practice of bead on plate comes into play. Now don't get me wrong, you know, a whole bunch of bead on plate is some awesome practice for a Saturday afternoon, but really the most common joint would be a fillet weld. Um, this is just a T-joint and you got a fillet weld, so it's when you got two pieces coming up to a 90 degree. Something that I always love having around to practice with is square tubing. You've got a fillet weld, you've got, you know, butt welds, groove welds, and also I think I've got some mitered pieces and you can also get corners. So you got a corner inside and out corner to practice. You can with flat plate too, but you know, it's not as fun. And after a whole bunch of practice, you can start to think about those couple other things. Stick out is the distance that the wire sticks out from the contact tip, and it should be about a half of an inch throughout your weld. Now your angle for flux core welding, you'll actually wanna come down at a 90, Clock it back 10 to 15 and then drag the weld. And for a T-joint, you'll go right in at a 45, clock it back and drag. No way around it, flux score is a dirty process, but you can easily clean it up with a wire brush or a wire wheel on a grinder. That's all for this one. Like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.